just Martin Konechny from the University of Stuttgart. He will talk us about uh, also a Peter related uh, talk about SPM um, scanning proof microscopy in plasma enhanced steroids EPR uh, resonance spectroscopy. So please go ahead, Martin. Oh, hello, hello, good afternoon. So thank you for uh, introduction. So I'm uh, will continue. My talk will uh, be focused on, on our progress in testing the, this uh, Peter setup. And, uh, but first of all, I would like to remind you that uh, this year, actually, it will be like 40 years since the first scanning probe microscope were developed. And I think everyone will uh, agree with me that during these 40 years, uh, this SPM techniques become like essential techniques to observe the matter at, uh, at nanoscale. And also many other varieties and modification of scanning probe microscope were developed. What we have of, of course see also in a nice previous talk of this day. And uh, in this table, I'm not uh, just, sorry. Uh, uh, I'm not showing, uh, of course, all, not all of them, but what I want to point out is that these techniques doesn't necessarily be only used for topo topography measurements, but they can provide us information also about uh, magnetic properties, electrical properties, or mechanical properties. And what is also nice about these uh, SPM techniques that they can be combined uh, with uh, other techniques here, as an example, I'm mentioning like AFM combined with uh, high resolution microscopy like stimulating depletion emission microscopy, tip enhanced Raman spectroscopy, the AFM combined with uh, or integrated with uh, scanning electron microscopy or scanning near field optical microscopy. Uh, before I will get to the, the Peter setup, I would like to also share with you some some of my results of the previous work, uh, what I was doing uh, before I came from Brno to Stuttgart. Then I will remind the goals of the Peter project. I will try to in more detail describe the Peter SPM unit and I will show like our first test of this SPM unit and uh, the Peter part of the instrument. And I will try to somehow uh, show you what our what will be our, be our next step so first what i want to show it's uh, the work what i was doing in brno and it was focused on uh, correlative afm and sem imaging and this work was done on microscope light scope which was actually designed uh, by the same people uh, who also co collaborate with tk on the design of this uh, special Peter SPM unit. And as you can see, this SPM microscope is uh, very small, so it can be uh, easily integrated of in, uh, into a, a most of the current SEM microscope, and it can be placed directly on the sample stage. Uh, why we would like to have the, the AFM in SEM, it's actually to use it in SEM, it allows you to have very like precise and fast deep navigation. If you tilt your microscope, you can, you can also, also observe directly the, in, the interaction of your tip with the sample. And uh, you are making this AFM and SEM, SEM uh, measurements in the same environmental conditions. And on the end, it can also help you to somehow interpret uh, your data. In this picture, I'm showing uh, the CVD graphene grown on the Kofper foil. And this first two images actually shows you like, uh, you can see the tip in, in the SEM. And then the, the, the technique, which is unique for this microscope is some sort of a correlative AFM SEM imaging. In this mode, actually, the, the scanning with the electron beam is switched off and the beam is point point uh, to stay near the AFM tip. And then the scanning is realized only by the piezo stage of the, of the AFM. And uh, in this way, you can record 
from the same position, your AFM and uh, SEM, SEM image. And then it's, uh, you can, for example, uh, take your 3D AFM topography and color it with your signal from secondary electrons or bed scattered electrons, and you actually get some sort of true 3D electron uh, microscopy image. On this slide, I'm just want to quick show another examples of this imaging. Here we have some defective layer of bismuth ferrite on a graphite surface. Here is a graphene uh, grown over the terraces of uh, silicon carbide. And since this uh, light scope microscope is very small, it can also be combined with uh, other techniques which are included uh, in a scanning electron microscope, for example, with focus ion beam, or here I have an example for energy dis dispersive X-ray spectroscopy. And this measurement was done on the cross-section of the multi-layer capacitor. And so you can study the, the topography, uh, you can obtain your SEM images, and together with that, you can also get the information about the chemical composition of the of the sample. So that was all with uh, respect to my previous work. And now I'm getting to the Peter project. So the goal is actually the development of a new instrument, which combines the SPM with terahertz electron magnetic resonance. And the main goal is to achieve uh, the special resolution of EPR below, below one micrometer. Uh, this is going to be achieved by using the special SPM probe with plasmonic antenna on the tip, which uh, upon the irradiation with microwave radiation uh, enhances the magnetic field around the tip. And by then by detecting the EPR signal, which originates from this uh, near volume around the tip, you can then uh, locally probe the your example with EPR. What would be the ideal case is that with the, uh, the SPM topography, you can uh, then record some sort of EPR map, which uh, can reflect then the different materials presented on your surface. Since this e uh, EPR spectroscopy is usually uh, carried out at very low temperatures and in high magnetic field, it was necessary to develop the SPM unit, which can fit into the cryostat of superconductive magnet. So therefore this SPM have to be operational from low temperatures up to room temperatures in high magnetic field and in varying environment, like from high vacuum to one bar. The heart of this scanning uh, probe microscope unit are the uh, scanners uh, we have and positioners, uh, they are stuck in this tower and there are some, uh, there are piezo scanners uh, with lateral resolution of uh, 80 uh, micrometers at uh, room temperature. And for uh, rough positioning, we have some uh, macro positioners with traveling range of five millimeters. On top of these scanners, there is a installed like the sample stage, the sample holder. You can see that there is this hole which allows you to irradiate uh, your sample uh, from below by this microwave. And here we have a probe with uh, the probe holder. Uh, since uh, this microscope uh, doesn't have any, uh, or the, the laser beam deflection system, it's only compatible with uh, cell sensing and self-actuating uh, probes based on tuning force or with the self-sensing piezo-resistive probes. In principle, with this microscope, you can carry out uh, the simple uh, topography modes, but also some advanced AFM techniques. But for us, the, the most important or what we will mostly use is this uh, frequency modulated Stepping. As I said, uh, this microscope is uh, compatible with these uh, uh, tuning fork based probes. This is actually how our probes will look like. So we have a tuning fork. On the end of the tuning fork, we have the 
tip made from the optical fiber. And uh, the tip is then shaped by the focus ion beam. Uh, and uh, there is a plasmonic antenna uh, made on the apex of the tip. Uh, here we have a like scheme of the whole uh, Peter experiment. And what I will not go through all this scheme, but what I want to point here is how to actually uh, uh, detect the EPR signal, which, ori which is originating from the small volume of the tip apex. In a classical or in EPR spectroscopy, you usually modulate your magnetic field, and then you modulate, uh, demodulate your uh, signal which is coming from the detector at the frequency of this uh, field modulation. In our case, we will first of all demodulate the signal at the frequency of the oscillating tip and then at the frequency of the field modulation. Since this, uh, this microscope is a prototype and uh, it's quite unique, it was first of all necessary to test its performance uh, like in low temperatures in air and to optimize uh, the, the, the scanning and so on. And uh, we didn't go directly with, for the testing with this uh, uh, tip with antenna, but we use some, com we use commercial probes Akiyama probe because, of course, these uh, tips with antenna, they are uh, not easy to be fabricated and their fabrication is uh, uh, time consuming. So we, use, we go for these Akiyama commercial probes and uh, we first of all tested the microscope in air, then in the cryostat, in the various pressure and uh, various uh, temperatures. Of course, uh, we we were mainly dealing with some problems with vibrations, but uh, step by step, we are improving the performance uh, of the microscope. And the testing was also carried out with the, the probes, which has the same, uh, same, co same configuration as these final PETA probes. But here, instead of the tip with antenna, there is uh, only the optical fiber, which is etched uh, to, to form a nice sharp tip. And we, with this kind of tip, we also uh, carry out the test at low temperatures and so on. Uh, if you don't have to go directly to some temperatures below the temperature of liquid nitrogen, you can just immerse the SPM into the liquid nitrogen, which of course saves uh, quite a lot of helium. And uh, you can, for example, also very quickly replace the probe if it's needed and so on. So this is uh, the results of testing our SPM unit. And what uh, also we did, and what also Elisa showed that we separately were testing successfully also the EPR part of the Peter setup and we did these tests and uh, manganese 12 sample. And what, so now we know that the SPM unit is working and the EPR uh, part is working. So now we, our plans is, are to merge it, this together. And for that, we choose uh, like some testing samples. And one of these samples, is the nickel ferrite disc uh, fabricated on the quartz substrate. And what we are actually uh, going to probe here, it's not the EPR, but the ferromagnetic resonance of this disc. And we just did some measurements on our high field EPR setup to see what we should expect. And that's uh, what we can see here. And then in the following weeks and months, we are now trying to put all these things together and hopefully we will see some, uh, uh, some enhancement by the presence of this, uh, of this tip. So I would like you to, to cross the fingers uh, for us. And uh, I hope that uh, 
in the following weeks or months, we will be able to also show you some other results. And that's all from me. And on the end, I would like to thank uh, all the people which actually contribute on this project. They're like responsible for the design of the SPM unit, preparation of the samples and probes and so on. And I thanks also to European Union for the supporting this project. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Martin. Uh, okay, we already have a question, Sasha. <laughs> Sorry, it's me again. <laughs> Martin, thanks for a great talk. Um, so, did you say that uh, you're planning to use the um, frequency modulated? Um, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, yes. AFM. Uh, yeah. Yes. Or is it amplitude? So what do you detect actually? Uh, we will use the frequency modulated uh, tapping mode. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in this tapping mode, uh, in this mode, you actually uh, drive uh, the oscillation of the probe at its resonance frequency. And you, by phase locks loop, you actually maintain the, the oscillation at resonance frequency, even when, uh, for example, this frequency is changed by the interaction with your sample. And uh, what is used for the, for the topography feedback is then the change in resonance frequency. I'm, I'm not sure, if, was this your question or? Yes, I just, I know that uh, for vacuum conditions, uh, you might have a very slow response. Yes, but uh, that's the reason why we are actually using the frequency modulated. Ah, that's uh, right, exactly, exactly, because, okay. Uh, yeah, and also also these probes, these tuning for probes, they have even a very high quality factor even in, in, in air. So they are usually used only in the frequency modulated mode. But what we also tried, what was possible with these probes, because since... Uh, when you glue the tip on this uh, tuning fork, you use, they are not uh, uh, balanced anymore. So the wave factor is uh, decreasing and it depends on how much of glue you put on the tuning fork. So, in, mm. so with some of these probes, I was also able to carry out the measurements even in amplitude modulated mode. I see. Thank you. <laughs>